Hey everyone, so the other day I posted a video about uh, the importance of ancestor veneration within the practice of hoodoo and I think I tried to make it relatively clear that hoodoo is a practice of ancestral veneration. Without the ancestors there would be no hoodoo um, and still they are at work in the blood, heritage, and lineage of African Americans in America. So that's something that I wanted to impress in the last video and I promised a video about um, working with your ancestor altar, um, how to build one and how to maintain one. So this video will most likely be in two parts um, So because it's a pretty long topic and I tend to keep my videos at three to five minutes because uh, of people's attention span. And when the subject matter is so intense and so important to me, I want to make sure that people can digest it. I want to begin by saying um, your ancestor altar, your, your ancestral veneration does not begin at your ancestor altar. It begins within yourself. So we are an extension of all of the work, all of the dedication, all the sacrifices that our ancestors have made. Their lives are literally what our DNA is composed of. So we are our ancestors and our ancestors are us. Ancestral veneration is a practice of respecting one's self, one's heritage, one's lineage. And in working and um, elevating our ancestors, we effectively elevate ourselves. There is no getting away from ancestral veneration. They're with you 24-7. They reside with you. They walk with you. They work through you. There's, there's no, I don't like my ancestors, so I'm not going to work with them. And you'll be surprised. I've had uh, quite a few people pose that question to me. What if I don't like my ancestors? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you like your ancestors or not. It's the choice between working through and with uh, the powers that you walk with or deciding not to work with those things and allowing those things to work on you. Either you're going to work with them or they're going to work on you. Those are the choices. Um, people have posed the question, what if I have, um, you know, murderers in my bloodline? And it's, just, it's a good question. What if I have uh, people who don't have good personalities or weren't good uh, individuals in my bloodline? Would I want to invite them into my household? Um, would I want to invite them to my altar? Would I want to build a relationship with them? Well, uh, too late. <laughs> they reside in your blood. If, if you like it or if you don't, there's some aspects of yourself that you may like and there may be some aspects of yourself that you don't like all the same. It's the difference between letting them work on you or working with them. It still comes down to those things. So first and foremost, I want you to understand and begin to have a mindset that your ancestors are always with you. They influence the choices that you make in your life. They influence the thoughts that go through your mind. They influence the emotions that you have. They influence your intuition. They influence the food you like. They obviously influence the color of your hair, color of your eyes, color of your skin. They are intrinsically a part of who you are. Take a moment to digest that, and in the next video, we're going to talk about how that personal relationship